There's been uh, an awful lot of successes with the coping project. Um, if you had to pick out what, what you would consider to be the, the main ones, or the main one, what would they be? It would be difficult to think about one main success. Um, because you're right, we have had quite a lot of successes, partly because from um, like about six months into the project, we started raising awareness wherever we met. Uh, everything that we did was about raising awareness and starting to generate some interest in this topic because across Europe we're imprisoning unprecedented numbers of people and of course that means there are unprecedented numbers of children are affected. Um, so we needed to raise awareness that children are not responsible for their parents' crimes and we therefore need to make sure we don't punish children alongside the punishment of their parents. Um, so I think probably the biggest thing is starting to talk on behalf of a group that are completely invisible. I mean, nobody in this country, no, no court, no prison, gathers data on the children of parents who've been imprisoned. We don't know how many children are affected. We can only estimate. Uh, but what we know from our research is that children are badly affected by parental imprisonment, but yet they cannot talk about it because of the stigma. Um, so I would say making children uh, whose parents are in prison less visible is perhaps one of the key things that we've done. Um, the other thing is I think we've highlighted that actually it's time that governments paid attention because there are social costs. There are costs to children when parents are in prison, but the research begins to tell us that these children are at high risk. Some of these children are at high risk of developing some mental health problems. Now, if we want to kind of cut off the cost of those mental health problems, it's time that we started to take action. Um, so our research shows us that, but importantly, our research tells us that children are resilient, that families can work together. If parents know how to handle their children, how to support their children, if agencies know what to do, if prisons know what to do, children will cope and will survive and we can learn lessons from children's resilience. And you talk about uh, taking action. Uh, the coping project has now come to its conclusion. The report uh, is out. Uh, where do you see it going? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you don't just see it stopping here. Um, no. It must go somewhere. Where, where do you think it could be taken? What would you like to see happen? What would I like to see happen? I would like, the first thing is that we've managed to get the United Nations to accept that children of prisoners are a vulnerable group. So they've been listed on their list of children who are most vulnerable in the world. I think we'd like to see the UK government take a similar position. At this point in time, there is no body that has responsibility for children of prisoners. Even though there are more children impacted by parental imprisonment than by divorce or by uh, parental death or by any other reason that causes family separation. So these are, this is a large group of children. We'd like to see the UK acknowledge that this is a vulnerable group of children. We'd like to see also that in imprisonment terms that we begin to gather data on the numbers of children affected. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.